Socialserviceapp.net is approaching its funding cutoff. For some, it's a viable alternative to Twitter. For others, it's just another example of tech snobbery. App.net calls itself a real-time social feed without the ads. Think Twitter, minus the sponsored posts and extraneous media. And instead of being ad-supported, its developers hope it will be something people are willing to pay to use. Dalton Caldwell, the lead developer behind the project, wants to make sure there's enough interest before App.net goes live, and is raising half a million dollars to get it off the ground. So App.net is essentially Twitter with a paywall, but a writer at the next web is willing to see what happens, especially given Twitter's recent moves to strip some third-party interaction from its platform. I'll admit I'm far from disillusioned by Twitter and I'm still a happy user. There are some serious questions hanging over its future relationship with its current community of third-party developers, though, meaning that Twitter, in a year from now, may be very different to what it is now. So it's interesting to see what else is on offer. A writer for Time likes the concept. If people are paying to use the service, chances are it will be a higher quality stream. It's likely to be spam-free and presumably low on those infamous Twitter users who like to tell the rest of the world what they've had for breakfast. People who pay real money for something that's available elsewhere for free are going to take the whole affair more seriously, or so I hope. A contributor for BuzzFeed suspects the white flight phenomenon might be at play. She suggests the interest in App.net is from affluent social web users looking for a degree of exclusivity. It contains elements of both white flight, affluent white people distancing themselves from the more diverse user bases of Facebook and Twitter, and gentrification. Affluent white people creating a site that conforms to their tastes and has a higher cost of entry. And to me, these things make App.net seem a lot less appealing. I'm happy to escape being the product, but joining a digital country club holds little appeal. But Gawker says, if anything, App.net is more of a grab for the glory days of geekery, like when Facebook was only open to certain university students and tech industry employees. But App.net's emphasis on its geek cred, we're building a real-time social service where users and developers come first, they say, seems to be more about a nostalgia for the early days of social networking, when the only people tweeting and Facebooking were super tech-savvy early adopters. While those early adopters might be willing to pay, M.G. Siegler says App.net simply won't gain the momentum required to compete. App.net's problem is twofold. First, Twitter already exists. More specifically, it already exists at a scale. Second, the web is simply not conducive to a user-supported service reaching the scale of Twitter. Yes, that sucks, but again, it's reality. Of course, App.net's viability in the larger social marketplace is a moot point if it's not funded by midnight on Monday. At time of writing, it still needs $40,000. For Newsy, I'm Logan Tittle. Multiple sources, the real story.